Greetings. Today we are going to study Jesus' arrival meetings. Well, what's all that about? Well, Jesus has given us a set of commanded holy meetings that link together and point to the major events of Jesus and his second coming. And so, we're just calling it Jesus' arrival meetings. Jesus had Paul explain to the New Gentiles, the New Testament church Gentiles, Jesus said, I will build my church. And so, Paul is teaching them how to do it. Jesus had Paul explain why God still wanted his holy meetings kept in the New Testament era, i.e., for the past 2,000 years, all the way up until the arrival of Jesus on the planet. Now, Jesus faithfully kept these meetings himself, and so did his apostles after he went to heaven. In Colossians 2, verse 16, we read, So let no one judge you, meaning, don't let outsiders, don't let anybody outside the church who doesn't understand, who doesn't have spiritual discernment, don't let outsiders judge you, in food and in drink, yes, the Bible stipulates the kinds of foods we should eat and the kinds of food we shouldn't eat. The kinds of drink we should drink and the kinds of drink we shouldn't drink. You can find that in the Bible. It goes on. And regarding, so don't let outsiders judge you, regarding a festival, meaning Leviticus 23, if you want to look there, or a new moon, which is the way the festivals are arranged in the calendar, new moons or new months, or Sabbaths, which are Bible celebrations. Colossians 2, 17, which are, okay, back up a little, regarding a festival, new moons or Sabbath, which are, didn't say were, Old Testament, he said are, New Testament, a shadow, they're pointers of things to come. So. Paul is telling the New Testament Gentiles that these festivals are arrival meetings. They're pointers, they're holy convocations. If you look in your Bible, in the Old Testament, you'll see holy convocation means a holy rehearsal meeting. Now, each holy meeting points to different aspects of how Jesus plans to arrive on the planet and rebuild the planet after the Battle of Armageddon. Now, people, people are using Armageddon left, right, and center for almost anything. They use it for snow, they use it for financial debacle, but there's going to be a battle near the place called Armageddon, and it is going to ramp up human control of planet Earth. It's going to introduce Jesus arriving and controlling the Earth, and these holy meetings that he's given us help us focus on and identify and understand how these things are going to play out. Now here's a question we can ask. Is Colossians 2, the verse we just read, is that the only evidence that Paul taught Gentiles to observe these Israelite holy meetings? Well, no, that's not the case because in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 8, therefore let us keep the feast is what you read in your Bible. It should read, keep the festival. Therefore, let us keep the festival. What is festival? It's holy meetings, as you can study out for yourself. Now, not with old leaven. And why would he mention leaven in relationship to a feast? Because the feast or festival of unleavened bread is one of the festivals. Nor with the leaven, again, the reference to leaven, of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread, so he just went right out and said it, but he said, keep the feast, keep the festival. What of? Unleavened bread. It's so obvious. With sincerity and truth. So, this unleavened bread festival is the number two holy meeting festival. Right? All seven of these holy meeting festivals are listed in Leviticus chapter 23, which is the third book of your Bible. If you've got a Bible handy, all you have to do is Grab it, open it to the first book, Genesis, second book, Exodus, third book, Leviticus, chapter 23, and there they are, listed the Sabbath, and all seven of the annual holy festivals are listed there for people to understand. Paul taught, as we saw, 
that New Testament Gentiles, not even Jews here, but Gentiles would have to learn how to attend these holy meetings. So Paul also taught the Gentiles about the first holy meeting festival in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23. He says, for I, Paul, received from the Lord, meaning Jesus, directly, face to face, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, okay, this is history, on the same night, this is what Jesus told Paul, on the same night in which he was betrayed. That night was the Passover night. It was the first holy meeting festival and it's a night observance, a night holy meeting. It says, so he's telling the Gentiles on the same night that the Lord was betrayed, he took bread. Right? Now Jesus was about to begin the new covenant era by his death. Until his blood was shed, there would be no new covenant. And so he sheds his blood on that day, on that Passover day, 14th of Nisan, if you want to study that out. Right? Leviticus, I mean, Luke 22, verse 15, Jesus said to his disciples gathered in the room, the upper room, on Passover evening, getting ready to eat the Old Testament Passover and to introduce the New Testament Passover symbols. He said, with fervent desire, okay, your Lord and Savior, Jesus says, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover, there'd been many Passovers in the past, there would be many New Testament Passovers in the future, 2,000 years worth. He said, this Passover with you before I suffer, meaning his death, meaning he would shed his blood, meaning the new covenant era would be thrown wide open. Verse 16, for I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled or filled full in the kingdom of of God. That's his return. That's when he returns to the planet, when the kingdom of God comes to planet earth. So Passover is yet to be filled full at Christ's coming, at the return of Christ. So in 1 Corinthians 11, 24, he said, and when he given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This first holy meeting festival is a memorial, a remembrance meeting. Verse 25, in the same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant, the new agreement between man and God. In my blood, had to have shed blood, this do in remembrance of me, remembering what? Mainly his shed blood and his sacrifice and, and the other things that he suffered. This holy meeting is an annual memorial meeting of the death of Jesus and also a reminder meeting pointing to the coming of Jesus in power. Yes, he died and he went to heaven, but he's coming back in power. Verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this first holy meeting festival is a proclamation meeting it's a memorial meeting of his death. You're proclaiming the Lord's death. Interesting, the tradition doesn't do this. Tradition proclaims his resurrection from the dead. It doesn't proclaim his death, as he said. But that's tradition. We leave that for another day. Proclaim the Lord's death, the day he died, Passover day, until, so for 2,000 years, we, with this first holy day meeting, are proclaiming the Lord's death, year after year after year after year, until he comes, until the arrival of Jesus Christ. Book of Revelation gives many, many verses that showing that Jesus is and was the powerful, returning Passover Lamb of God. He was obviously the Passover, it says so in the Bible, he was obviously the Passover Lamb that was pointed to, He's the Passover Lamb of God. Revelation 5.12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wow! Whew! What a list! This is the powerful Jesus Christ returning as the Lamb of God. John the Baptist knew 2,000 years ago that Jesus was to be the great Passover Lamb of God. 
And he said in John 1 verse 29, the next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God. What kind of Lamb of God? The Passover Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How does he do that? By his shed blood. Then verse 35, again the next day John stood with two disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Most people didn't know what they were talking about but it, with the keeping of the Passover, the first Holy Day meeting, and focusing on all that Jesus did, and Revelation is obvious that Jesus is the coming powerful Lamb of God, but also the Passover Lamb of God. Until the death of Jesus, Old Testament Passovers focused on eating the lamb meal after the lamb's blood had been shed. So even whether they knew it or not, it was pointing to the shedding of the lamb of God's blood. Now if you understand this, pointed forward to the Messiah's shed blood. Most people did not understand, did not comprehend, didn't have a clue that Messiah would shed his blood and would die. Many of, many to this very day do not see these holy meetings as pointing forward to giant steps in God's plan for saving the human race. They see it as pointing backwards. They say, oh, that's old and Jewish. No, it's pointing to the coming of the mighty, powerful Passover Lamb of God person, Jesus. Nowadays, the Passover Holy Meeting, Holy Meeting number one in the series of seven, points forward to the all-powerful Lamb of God appearing in the sky to rule planet Earth for a thousand years. So, we have meeting number one shows the future, just like Paul told us, but nobody pays much attention to it. Revelation 6.16, he said to the mountains and the rocks, they said to the mountain and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him. This is the Father who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's Jesus. In verse 17, the great day of his wrath, God's wrath, Jesus is coming back in wrath against the rebellious humankind who have, want to have nothing to do with the Bible or with Jesus. So there's two major activities described at this arrival in Revelation 11:18. It says, the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead and they should be judged that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, you're going to reward those who have been servants of God. And, second part, destroy those who destroy the earth. People are going to be in the process of destroying the earth. Jesus is going to come back, battle of Armageddon, and destroy those people. The Passover lamb, Jesus, and God, the Father, share the Godhead throne. The two of them are the Godhead. Revelation 22, 1. He showed me a pure river of life clear as crystal, proceeding out from the throne of God and of the Lamb. The two of them sit on the throne and this flows out from the throne where both of them are sitting. Revelation 7, 14. And I will make, let's see, these will make war with the Lamb, the Passover Lamb of God, Jesus, the Passover Lamb of God, and the Lamb will overcome them. He wins the battle of Armageddon. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So most people are not thinking of Jesus as the Lamb of God. They say, oh yeah, that, that must be him in Revelation. But they're thinking Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they're thinking Jesus. And God is showing that he is the Passover Lamb of God who comes in wrath to fight the enemies of God and to reward the servants of the Lamb of God. Now, God wants humans to understand his plans for the future. He loves us, he cares for us, he wants us to know what's going on and how it's all going to work out. So, he provided holy meetings, holy meeting festivals, to help remind us of the greatness of the greatness of Christ's return. How awesome! We saw that verse where it just goes on and on and on with the description. This is why Jesus had Paul tell us holy meeting festivals are still active a shadow of things to come 